Hi, this is Danny from DR Shooting. Uh, in this film, we're going to be conducting a field test of the new Zeiss DTC 338 um, using a Zeiss Victory V8 uh, 1.8 14 by 50 um, scope. Welcome to the Night Vision Show. If you missed the, the first film uh, on the unboxing, um, please have a look in the description below and you'll see uh, there's a link there. Uh, and just gives you the details about how to fit the end cap, etc., um, and uh, what comes in the box. Uh, but essentially what we have here is the DTC 338 with the DTC RA attachments. So it allows you to put it straight onto the scope. Um, and as I alluded to earlier on, I have here, um, which I must thank Zeiss for very much because um, it's been really nice to play with. It's the uh, Victory V8 1.8 1450 scope. Um, really nice piece of kit. Um, really well built and it's yeah a real pleasure to shoot with. Uh, all we need to do is attach this device onto the rifle. It is as simple as this. Make sure the clip is it open. Bring it down, seat it onto the rifle, and make sure you hear that clunk and it fits on. S sitting it vertical is probably the best, so you make sure you get it fit on properly. And then just line it up. I use the, um, the focus adjustment at the top uh, to line it up with the turret. And essentially, push the clip on. Just check it's not loose. Okay, make sure that's, that's solid. If you do need to tighten it, as I mentioned in the previous video, just an Allen key under there, just to assist you to tighten the, um, the lock and bolt. That's on, it's solid, um, and actually, you know, it's, it's not too you know, unbalanced at all. Um, that's it. You know, I, I've shot a lot of thermal scopes, um, but one of the benefits clearly is, you know, Zeiss have been making scopes for a very long time, precision scopes, um, and uh, that really did come, um, really <laughs> came to me when I was shooting this. Um, you know, I, I haven't shot a Zeiss scope before, um, but literally the glass is phenomenal. Um, so the ability to go out hunting and stalking uh, and having, you know, using your Zeiss scope uh, and all the other bits that come with it and the assistance you get through the application of the Hunter app, etc., and the ballistic detail. Um, you know, I, I mean, I could, I could spend a session talking about the scope alone, but the ability to take that and add a thermal add-on um, to enable you to shoot beyond dark um, is, is definitely a step forward. Um, and in other areas as well, another a good use for having these clip-ons is is again, you know, within the parameters of an hour before and hour after uh, when you're allowed to shoot shoot deer. Um, when you're in, you know, thick thick woodland and all the rest of it, the light, you know, it, it's it's not great. Um, I know the scopes do 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 really amplify the light, but essentially a thermal add-on uh, gives you that benefit, especially for things like, you know, monk jack um, stuff that's in the undergrowth um, and really is difficult to find. Um, these thermal add-ons. Uh, really will um, bring that to the fore. So uh, functionality wise, uh, they haven't gone overborne, which is really good because sometimes you find there's a lot of buttons on scopes and a lot of things that create issues. Uh, I like the dial, the focus dial here at the front. It's really, really good. Um, I've only ever seen one other thermal scope that does this. Um, essentially, rather than having to twist your end, essentially your, your focus adjustment is here 
and it's very, very um, small adjustments. Um, you've got your on button here uh, and essentially your menu button. So the first button you get to, which is clearly what you'll want to get if you want to use change anything, would be your menu button. Um, that can be used, initial, just touching it, changes the color palette, which again is a really nice feature. So when you've got the gun, the rifle up and you're looking through, rather than have to scroll through a menu and try and find the different palettes that you want to use, and, and that's quite simple. And then a longer press puts you into the main menu, which then you can scroll through uh, and see the, the detail in there. One key thing that I would stress is the Bluetooth. You turn it on, it syncs really quickly. It's not a wireless connection, it's Bluetooth. So it, it connects straight to your phone. Uh, and that, that becomes really relevant, um, as we'll discuss during the field testing, um, for your adjustment of the zero, okay? So obviously adding a, a thermal add-on, you're going from a, an optical, but I would say binary process, and adding a digital um, component on, there's gonna be some variation potentially. Um, and uh, they've got a really nice um, process and technique for that to happen. Um, using the Hunter app, there's Ice Hunter app, Hunting app, sorry, uh, on your phone, um, you know, you adjust basically your zero um, on, the, on the scope, which for me was a first um, and really, really put a big smile on my face. The specs of the actual scope itself on the add-on, it's a 384 by 288 12 micron sensor uh, with a 50 hertz refresh rate. Um, really good feature is the 10 by 24 768 HD AMOLED display. Um, really crisp pit picture. One thing to, to remember though, make sure your zoom on your, your scope is set back to back to zero. Um, yeah, because I wondered why it looked like Times Square in my face, um, but essentially because I'd zoomed right in. So essentially make sure it's zoomed back. Um, field of view, if you look, obviously the, the actual, it's quite you know, a, a smaller aperture, but actually, you know, you get a really good crisp image. Um, you're looking to detect um, a field of view about 12.3 meters at 100 meters. Uh, so it's a decent, decent span of uh, vision um, and a detection range of up to 19 um, 50 meters, so 1,950 meters. The uh, battery life, 10 hours, um, charge it through a USB port, um, which clearly is good for the field, so if you need to, you can use a power pack. Um, you know, you've got power standby mode, which I alluded to earlier on. Um, you, you move the rifle, uh, and it, you know, once it's tilted up, essentially, it goes in the standby. Um, some of the other features, for example, you've got four different profiles for zeroing, so you can have four different scopes. So whether that's not you're sharing around colleagues that you're with or you've got your own different rifles. Um, so you've got four profiles there and the color palettes as well. You've got four different color palettes. And that what's really, really, really good is, is the actual ability just to change color palette um, by the first button. Okay, you go from white to black um, and then red hot and then rainbow. I'll go back to what I said earlier on about the thermal. One thing I have noticed that it doesn't do, but actually I, I feel, you know, having looked at Zeiss, the scope itself, um, it doesn't record. There is no record function on the actual add-on. Um, is that a problem? No, I don't see it a problem at all because at the end of the day, um, because of the way that you see the scope, because all the zooming and all the activity is done on the scope here. So actually, this, this device is almost done. It's, it's giving you a feed and you're zooming. So if you were to record off this, this device and you were zooming in through the, through the scope, you're not going to see that. You're not going to see the crosshairs, you know, you won't see any detail apart from the image that's out there. So you're not going to see a great deal of um, anything really um, in, relating to the, in, in relating to the shot. Um, what I do like about it is, you know, as I say, it's simple. You add it on, it clicks in, it locks on, it's robust. So I think the big thing um, that stands out for me, um, you know, on top of what I've seen from other thermals, uh, thermal scopes that is, is, um, is why you're going to shoot Zeiss. Okay, when you look at a Zeiss scope, um, you know, you got all the different turrets, the different bits and pieces. You can use the hunting app on your phone, which you put in the range, the windage, uh, and the detail, and it will tell you the difference, uh, the calculations and the um, amendments you need to make on your scope. That engineering is, is being continued into the thermal uh, add-on itself. So for example, in the hunting app, um, when we're doing the field test, uh, when you do your adjustment um, for, for zero in and, and getting your point of aim, 
you don't touch the scope. Whereas every other thermal I've ever shot, you take a picture and you, you know, single shot is great. You know, one shot zero in, you move across and drop it in and it's, it's you know, you're, you're doing it through the eye and you look at the point of impact uh, from the point of aim and you move the crosshairs down and put it in, great. Um, with this, it's true German precision. You, you take a ruler or you, you can gauge, but to the centimeter where it is from the, from the point of impact to the point of aim, you type it on the app, you put it in, it shows you a, uh, a picture um, of the, a target, so it, it correlates that, um, those dimensions onto a target, so you can see and check, yes, that's the location where it's sh the, the shots fell. Uh, you put it in, it programs straight to the scope through Bluetooth, and it's amended. That's it. There's, there's, there's nothing else to do. There's no check out, save, th th that's it. So um, your, your ability to control the scope through your phone, okay, rather than having the scope up to your eye and trying to do, you know, messing around and all the rest of it, none of that. It's literally on the phone, adjust, job done. Um, that absolutely, to me, um, just epitomizes what you've got here. Um, it's simple, um, it's reliable, uh, and more importantly, it's, it's all about precision. Um, and, and that's what you've got here with this scope and this add-on. Okay. So I think the only thing we're left to do really is to get this out, get it zeroed, um, wrong, sorry, confirm the zero and it's, it's held the zero um, from the scope, um, get, it, get it brought in, quick field test, and then let's get out and uh, see what we can find. So before we start, I just want to do a confirmatory check zero um, with the Zeiss V8 uh, 1.8 14 by 50 on top of my Tika Light 308. Uh, just a confirmatory check group to make sure our point of aim is bang on and then we'll stick on the, the DTC um, and uh, just have a confirmatory check group again uh, and then we're ready for going out tonight. Yeah, first shot, first shot placement was here, and then I slipped, um, and the shot dropped here, and so we went for that third shot to get the group right, which is obviously on here, so 100 metres, we're, we're bang on, so hopefully, let's see how we get on with the uh, DTC. Okay, so um, came back, um, really impressed actually, because all I had to do was uh, turn the Bluetooth on, sync to the phone, go into the zero and profile, um, and literally select um, where, where it was on the target, because it gives you actually, literally, the rings are five centimeters, and you pick your, where it shows on the target, that's where it is, bang, hit it, and automatically it uploaded to the scope, so I could see the X and Y variation on the scope so obviously now we'll just do a confirmatory check check shot um, uh, and see how we are okay so went back to 50 meters initially just to just get confidence with the attachment um, and we ended up here um, low right then went back to 100 meters uh, and we were out here um, so got on the, the phone on the app on the 
and, and, and literally, um, it, it's amazing. You literally, we, type, we did a measurement of uh, 16 centimeters across and 11 centimeters down, um, typed it into the app, it went straight to the scope, adjusted it, fired a shot, straight in, um, in into, the, into the area where the heat source was. Um, you know, unlike a lot of other thermal scopes where you're adjusting, whether it's picture in picture or you freeze it, regardless, you're having to adjust it to where you think it is. This is measured engineered, this is really well engineered because literally you can get a ruler and measure in your, your distance down and across and, and put it in and it just does it. Um, so that to me is a, is a big tick, uh, big tick VG. We've just come into the wooden block. Um, it's about 20 minutes before the sun goes down. Uh, light's starting to fade. Size scope still, as you'd expect, really crystal clear, but just trying to functionality of the, um, the thermal uh, add-on. And uh, no, it's really, really good. Simple, place the bayonet fit on, slide it on, lock it in position, um, and, and then we're good to go. Um, you know, it's picking up heat sources, some mice and you know, some bits and pieces cutting about. You can still pick it out the detail. Um, you know, the 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 three two five, so the the slightly um, smaller uh, aperture um, gives you a bigger field of view. And whereas this is, as we said earlier on, twelve point three meters at hundred meters, um, your you know, the three two five has got a a, a wider. Uh, field of view, which is perfect for woodland uh, when you come in here. Obviously, when it, when it gets dark or it's it's you know the lights fading. Um, but now, so hopefully, um, look at Monk Jack and uh, and and such like. It's low in the cover, and this is going to be perfect for finding um, that heat source. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay, so. Um, Unfortunately, we can't show the recording as we alluded to earlier on, um, but we just watched the Monty and um, literally 100 metres out there, it broke off the hedge line and came out. Um, just watched it through the thermal, um, pick the heats up, but really, really easy. Um, you can see the detail, you know exactly what it is. Well, you know, I know it's a Monty because Monty and Row are here. I know it's not a row, I can see that it's walking, so I know it's a Monty. And you can see the shape and the definition. Um, when you look at the, the some of the other things I could just see, there's like a, a flock of um, small birds, either finches or tits, and you could pick them off on the ground at 100 metres away. You could see the small heat source, and then they're moving or flying into the into the bushes. Um, so no, it's 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 really good. You can, it picks out the image and the detail of the trees. There's there's fidelity in the background, so there's some real nice um, clear crisp footage, um, which. For a 384288 uh, 12 micron sensor, that's, that's really good, um, really crisp. Uh, you know, as I said earlier on about zooming in, once you start zooming in, though, you will lose, it will get pixelated, but that's like any thermal, um, even the top top of the range, once you go past, um, when you get to about 8, you start to lose it anyway. Um, but no, so it's really, really good and really you know, simple to use. So, one thing I haven't really got on and explained um, about, put a context on today. Um, when we did the zero in, it was literally 28 degrees. Um, obviously because the ground, that's not even the ground temperature, that's the, the air temperature, so I can't imagine how hot it was. But we're on stubble um, and the heat generated, you can see it. But the, the definition that you're still picking up um, and, and through the sensor, that 12 micron processor, it, it's absolutely nailing it, um, and, uh, and it's giving that definition, uh, which you know you've got to accept. When it's hot, you know everything gets affected, um, but you still be able to pick out targets. Um, zero in this morning, um, I was picking a two-inch heat pad up at 100 meters, even though the cardboard behind it was hot, everything was hot. We did as much as we could to try not to generate heat and keep it in the shade and stuff, but it, it literally. It picked it out really clear and the only time it lost clarity was, as I said earlier on, when I zoomed in too far because the scope's got really good zoom um, for as a, as a standard telescopic scope. Um, 
so obviously that then you put your thermal on there you lose it so um but no really really good um, and it's it's really had a challenge today with the heat and um, a lot of scopes will would struggle with the heat and, it, and it's it's done well so hats off so as I've said, we can't record off the actual device itself, um, but what we have had the chance to do is get the phone behind um, and line it up with the scope. It's really good. It was uh, white heat, and it's really, really good definition. And that's at 180 meters, um, you know. And, and I've already talked about the heat of the field and everything around everywhere is radiating a lot of heat. Uh, so it's really, really good to see, and the quality's there. Um, but uh, unfortunately, you can't see it. But like a lot of these things. You need to get your eye on to them to actually trial it. So I, I would advocate getting yourself to a game, sh a game show or a, a shooting show or any kind of night vision expo that's going on to trial this kit. Okay, so uh, now obviously the sun's down. Um, got a bit of foxing. And uh, so we'll put it through its paces. Um, ground's cooling. The air's definitely cooling. Um, and you're starting to see a bit more detail now. There's a few rabbits cutting about. Um, you're picking them up easy. Um, what I'm really interested in is not so much rabbits at 50, 60 meters. I want to see stuff at 150, 100, 150. I'm just seeing the, the, the clarity there uh, and seeing what we can see. So I'm just looking at a rabbit. It's 100 meters away. Um, and it's, it's crystal clear. Really, really good. So you're looking at some of the rabbit at 100 meters. Um, you know, and that's without zooming in. We'll see if we can take a little bit closer. And I'll see what I can do with that. There it goes. Yeah, starting to lose it there. Which is, yep, eight, eight times magnification, which you get with any kind of thermal, really. You can still see it's a rabbit. What you just lose, though, is the, the, the sharpness of the picture. So it just gets it's pixelated, but you would get that on any, any named. Um, brand really with a, a thermal, um, but no, really nice. There's a row. She's just browsing along a. That's about 150. Um, she's just browsing along a, a bramble hedge. Uh, just putting her head up. But uh, you can see it's a row quite clearly. Um, you wouldn't be able to sex it, but. I wouldn't be shooting a row with 150 meters and with a thermal in the dark, so. Um, but now you can see the, the quality there. Um, if I zoom out, take it back to standard base mag, um, that's a lot better, a lot, you know, the sharpness. You can see the detail even at range, which which is really important um, at the end of the day, that's what you want. Because that's why we put these on, because we want to make sure what we're shooting is right. Um, and the precision aspect. Um, but uh, as I pride themselves on, which, to be honest with you, I haven't shot with the scope, and then shot with this um, add-on. Yeah, very impressed. Um, yeah. That's it. Uh, essentially, three words. You know, precision. It's all about precision with this. Uh, reliability and simplicity. Um, any questions that you want uh, in relation to the Zeiss scope or the um, the add-on? Um, please look at uh, zeiss.co.uk. Uh, additionally, as I alluded to earlier on, the app, uh, the Zeiss hunting app in the App Store, um, is really good. It gives you a real feel for the support you get and the detail that you'll find. Um, so anyway, this is Danny from DR Shooting. Thanks for watching. Out.